Hey guys, this is Ben with Diesel Power Products. Uh, we are under my 2001 Ford Excursion installing a diesel site bypass tube eliminator kit on there. Um, this is going to be valid for anything from 94 to 2003, so E40D or 4R100s, pickup, excursion, you name it. As long as it's got that transmission in it, this will work for it. What we're doing here is there is a coolant or a tube that goes from on the side of the transmission that bypasses the cooler up front to help the transmission warm up faster. The only problem with that is over time it ends up bypassing the fluid and not letting it go to the cooler which it needs to go to the cooler instead. So we're gonna get rid of the tube altogether, which there's no really no negative down, uh, downside to that at all. And with the diesel site uh, kit, it actually gets rid of the check ball in there as well, which allows more flow to the cooler, which is always good. So we're under here right now. Um, I would recommend draining the fluid out of the transmission. Uh, do you have to? No, if you're super fast, you can do it, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend dropping the pan or dropping the fluid at least at that point. And then we're gonna be getting under here. As you can tell, I do have a four inch exhaust on here and the heat shield is still intact. So space is limited, but we are gonna kind of show you what we're getting at here. And then we're gonna show you outside of the truck as well. We'll show you a little bit more about what's going on. So let's get the lower, we've already dropped the fluid. We're gonna get the lower, uh, lower coolant line off and then work our way towards the front. So we've got five eighths box wrench and a 7 8 box wrench. All right, so we've got our transmission line loose right here. There's your 5 8 inch, and we've got our 7 8 inch transmission fitting. We're gonna crack that loose and get it off of there. And this right here that I'm kind of tapping, that is the bypass tube, which we're gonna get rid of all together. All right, so we've got the rear or lower fitting out, and we're gonna go into this a bit more later, but that's what it looks like. You can kind of see that you can't really see through it, right? We're gonna show you more about them in a little bit, but we gotta get the front fitting out as well. Uh, it's a little bit harder to see in there, but it's gonna be a very similar fitting. We're gonna pull it out and then gonna have everything to kind of show you what's going on. What's going on. It's, it's hot in the shop today, guys. All right, so we've got our front or upper transmission uh, line out of there. As you can see, you can see through that one. That one doesn't have a check wall from the factory, but we're still gonna get rid of it all together since we are getting, past, or getting rid of the bypass tube, which is right uses these holes right here. And it'll make more sense once we start comparing these fittings right next to each other. So here we go getting, or pulling the bypass tube out. There it is. There's the rear, and there's the front. It runs right on the passenger side of your transmission. Okay, so what we have here is the bypass tube the upper stock fitting and the lower stock fitting. Now how this normally sits in the truck is you have your transmission line going in here, transmission line going in here, and then these little holes that are, you kind of see them right there? That is what will allow fluid to bypass through the tube. And if we look at these two fittings right next to each other, you can see that there are no holes right there and it is shorter, but the same line will screw into it right there. That's because the transmission lines are still gonna screw in right here, and this is still gonna screw into the transmission. However, since it doesn't have these holes here anymore and it's shorter, it completely gets rid of the bypass tube altogether. You can see the same thing right over here. Stock fitting with holes right there, which feed in to that banjo fitting into the, the tube. The new fitting from diesel side is shorter, gets rid of this altogether. The other big thing that they do, which is also a very nice part, is over here, this is where all the bypass action would happen. If you look inside there, can't really see through it, can you? There's not a whole lot in there to see daylight through. Well, there's a spring and a check ball in there. And as the transmission warms up, that's supposed to allow fluid to stop bypassing and go all the way to the cooler. What happens? That thing gets filled up, doesn't do its job, and now you're bypassing fluid all the time. So to get rid of that and have it not happen again, look at that. Since there's no more bypass tube, there's no more check ball either. So you're getting 100% of the flow to the cooler all the time. All right, so putting these bad boys in, it's basically just reverse installation. Make sure you've got your O-ring in there. I'm sorry, O-ring right there. 
and your washer, which are both provided with the kit. Torque them down. Remember, you've got stainless steel going into an aluminum case. You don't need to refine it. It's real light. I think it's probably close to about 30 foot pounds. So once you feel it get tight, give it an extra and you're good. Okay, so we've got our bypass fittings installed on the truck. I'm gonna show you what it looks like right now so we can give you a little bit of a reference. Um, as you remember last time, this stuck out further. This line was further towards uh, the heat shield here. But since we got rid of that bypass tube and we have that shorter fitting from diesel site, it actually fits in closer to the transmission. You actually have more room between the line and the, how or the, line and the heat shield to install it. So if you're, if you're looking at it, it doesn't quite look right, that's why, because we're getting actually rid of that transmission bypass, which would normally be pretty much right here and the fitting outside here.